Hey, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive, and in this video, we'll create this responsive footer using CSS Flexbox. To start, add a container element with a container inside with a class of footer container. Inside this container, add another container with a class of footer info. Let's create a link for our logo by adding an anchor tag with a class of footer title. Next, I'll go to heroicons.com and search for lightning. I'll click copy SVG on this icon and head back to CodePen to paste the SVG code between the anchor tag. After the SVG and inside the anchor tag, add a span with the company's name. Outside the anchor tag and inside the closing footer info container, add a paragraph tag with a class of footer tagline and include the company's tagline. Now let's create the section for the footer links by creating a container outside the footer info container with a class of footer section wrapper. Inside this container, add a new one with a class of footer section. Then add a heading to tag with a class of footer category and the category name for the links in this section. Next, create a nav element with a class of footer list and add four list elements inside. Within the list elements, add an anchor tag with a class of footer link and the text for the link. Now copy this footer section and paste it three more times below. Outside the footer container and inside the closing footer tag, add a new container with a class of footer bottom. Add a container inside with a class of footer bottom container. Inside this new container, add a paragraph tag with a class of footer copyright and add a copyright disclaimer. Below the copyright and inside the footer bottom container, create a new container with a class of footer social. Add an anchor tag with a class of footer social icon inside this new container. Head to simpleicons.org, search for Facebook, and click on the icon to copy the SVG code. Then head back to CodePen and paste the SVG code inside the anchor tag. Add a fill attribute to the SVG icon and set the value to current color. This attribute is used to change the color of the SVG with CSS. Repeat this process for more social icons as needed, copying the SVG code and adding the fill attribute. Now that the HTML is complete, let's start styling the footer with CSS. As a reminder, we'll be styling for mobile screens first. Later in the video, we'll add media queries to style the footer for larger screens. With that said, let's go ahead and resize the window to fit mobile screens. Now head to fonts.google.com and search for Enter. Select the 400 and 500 weight fonts and copy the import code. Then head back to CodePen and paste the import code at the top of the CSS file. To use the font we just imported, add the font family property on the body tag, setting the value to enter with a fallback of the browser's default sans serif font. Above the body tag, let's declare a couple CSS variables that we can use for colors. By using CSS variables, we can easily change the color values here without needing to replace every instance of the color value in our CSS. With the CSS variables added, let's move on to the footer container class styles. This class will use Flexbox, so we need to set display to flex. We want the children in the flex box to wrap to the following line when there's not enough space, so set the flex wrap property to wrap. We also want the children to stack on top of each other instead of the default left to right orientation, so set the flex direction property to column. To space the elements from the top, bottom, left, and right sides, add a gap property with a value of 2 rim. Next, add a padding of 3 rim on the top and bottom, and a padding of 2 rim on the left and right. To avoid the container from extending across the entire page, set max width to 80 rem. Now center the container by setting the margin left and margin right to auto. The next element we'll style is the footer info container. First set the width to 16 rem and center the container by setting margin left and margin right to auto. Last center the text by setting text align to center. The next element we'll style is the footer title container. This container uses Flexbox to so set display to flex. Then center the elements in the container horizontally and vertically by setting align items and justify content to center. Set the color to the gray 900 variable and remove the underline by setting the text decoration to none. Set the font size to 1.125 rem, line height to 1.75 rem, and font weight to 500. Last, add a margin bottom of 0.5 rem to space the title from the tagline. Now let's style the SVG icon that we got from Hero Icons. First, set the width and height to 1.25 rem. Change the color of the SVG by setting the color property to the white variable. Next, we'll add a circle backdrop behind the icon by giving it padding, setting the background color, and making it entirely round by setting the border radius to 50%.
Last, we'll get the text inside the span tag from space from the icon by setting the margin left to 0.5 rem. Next, let's style the footer tagline by setting the color to the gray 500 variable, font size to 0.875 rem, and the line height to 1.25 rem. Now it's time to style the footer section wrapper. First, set flex grow to 1, which tells the CSS that this container should take the remaining space available in the parent flexbox container. This container will also use flexbox, so set display to flex. Set flex direction to column to align the children elements from top to bottom. Then set flex wrap to wrap, so the elements will wrap when space is needed. Set gap to 2 rim to space the children 2 rim on the top, bottom, left, and right. Then center the text by setting text align to center. Last, set the font size to 0.875 rem and line height to 1.25 rem. Now let's style the footer category by setting the color to the gray 900 variable and setting the font weight to 500. As an extra touch, increase the spacing between each letter by setting the letter spacing to 0.1m. And force the text to be uppercase by setting text transform to uppercase. Last, give the category some distance from the links by adding a margin bottom of 0.75 rem. The next element to style is the footer list. This element will use flexbox, so set display to flex. Then set flex direction to column to align the items from top to bottom. To give the links some space from each other, set the row gap to 0.25 rem. Last, set the list style type to none to remove the default bulleted list styles. The styles for the links are pretty simple. Change the color to gray 600 variable and remove the default underline by setting text decoration to none. Then include a hover style by using the hover selector and changing the color to the variable gray 800. Now let's move on to the last section of the footer, the footer bottom container. To start, set the background color to use the gray 100 variable. The next element, the footer bottom container, will use flexbox, so set display to flex. Then set the flex direction to column, flex wrap to wrap, and row gap to one rim. Then we'll give the container some padding, Set the max width to 80 rem and center it by setting the margin left and margin right to auto. Now style the footer copyright by setting the color to the gray 500 variable. Then set the font size and line height and center the text by setting text align to center. The next element is the container for the social icons. This container will use flexbox, so set display to flex. Then center the container by setting the justify content to center. Last, give each social icon space by setting the column gap to one rim. Set the color for the icons on the footer social icon class. Then set the width and height on the SVG. Our footer is ready for mobile screens, but when we resize the browser, you'll see that we still need a style for larger screens. To start, write a media query and set the min width to 640 pixels. The first change is to the footer container class, which will set the flex direction to row. Right now, the footer info container is centered, so we can override that by setting margin left and margin right to zero, and text align to left. Similarly, change the justify content value to flex start for the footer title to shift the container to the start of the flex box. Next is the footer section wrapper, which will set the flex direction to row. We want flexbox to figure out the spacing for us, so we'll set the justify content to space between. Last, set text align to left. Right now, the copyright and social icons are stacked on top of each other. So to fix that, we can set flex direction to row. On larger screens, we want the copyright on the far left and the social icons on the far right. An easy way to do that is set the justify content to space between. Want to learn how to build a responsive 12 column grid in under three minutes using CSS Grid? Check out this video. Again, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive, and I'll see you in the next one.